Welcome to Power System Analysis using ETAP course. Now that we know the overview of our industrial network, so what are the different components which uh, comprises uh, or which creates an industrial network? Now it is time to know the system modeling. So how do we need to model each of those equipment using ETAP? So before going into the, you know, some details of this, first of all, we need to understand what is system modeling and why is system modeling required. System modeling is required because each component or a group of component of an industrial or a commercial system be represented so that an analysis of the system performed can be made. Because the transformer uh, in basic electrical engineering, you have to use this basic electrical engineering formulas. So for in order to create this, uh, uh, solve this network, what you need is you need some mathematical equations so that which can be solved with the help of electrical engineering equations. For instance, if a transformer, if I can represent my transformer in the form of resistance and reactance or impedance, then what I can do, I can calculate the value of current Sim simply by making the uh, using the Ohm's law equation, which is equal to V is equal to IR or I is equal to V by R or V by Z. Similarly, power passing through any transmission line can be find with the help of P is equal to VI because now I know the current flowing through the uh, transmission line. I know the voltage of the transmission line. Now I can calculate the power flowing through the transmission line. So for this reason, it is very important to represent each of these equipment in the form of some mathematical form. Secondly, which of the several possible representations or models of the system is well suited to meet the objectives of a given study. So now you need to make some choices that what kind of study you are performing and for a particular kind of study, what kind of models are required. For instance, if you are performing simple load flow analysis, for the load flow analysis, you are not interested in the dynamics of the motor. So now what you can do is instead of detail going into the detail modeling of an induction motor or a synchronous motor what you can do is simply model the megawatt and megawatt value active power and reactive power values of these motors because in load flow analysis you only need to know okay what is the active and reactive power of a load so by doing this you will get your results for the load flow analysis but if you are performing this motor starting analysis, now this model will not work for this because there you need to know the dynamics of the motor with the changing voltages or the changing current, how your motor is going to respond. So this way you need to know what kind of representation is okay for a certain kind of a study. Thirdly, what mathematical expressions will describe the characteristic of each element so that it can be quantified and programmed for computer input. So you need to know, okay, for each kind of study, what kind of mathematical expression is enough? So do I need to go for what kind of uh, analysis for this analysis? What equation can be used to convert my physical quantity into an electrical quantity or a mathematical quantity? So before going into the system modeling, we need to review the basics. So we have two type of components in our system. One is this passive elements, one is the active elements. So passive elements are those elements whose values or the uh, quantity does not vary with respect to time or with respect to other things. It's not time varying. So some of the basic passive quantities in a power system are the transmission lines, transformers, reactors, capacitors. So these are kind of a basically all those components which have R, L and C, the resistance, react, inductance or reactance or capacitance in your system. So any equipment which has, uh, so these are the kind of equipment which you have resistance, inductance and capacitance in your system. And in an AC system with the changing sinusoidal wave, the equation of these becomes, for instance, if you want to know the current flowing through the resistance, you can simply use V is equal to IR or I is equal to V by R. Similarly, your inductance, it can be converted into reactance. So for converting your inductance into reactance, what you simply have to do, you have to calculate XL. And what is XL equal to? XL is equal to 2 pi FL. So what is the uh, 2 pi FL? 
so f will be your system frequency at whatever frequency you are trying to calculate this network for instance in india the frequency is 50 hertz so here f we will be using as 50 but in another country for usa where the frequency is 60 hertz there the value of f will be 60 hertz similarly for and then with the help of this you can find your current and voltages also you need to be able to convert your different values for instance resistance has a reciprocal known as conductance and so what is conductance conductance is the reciprocal of resistance similarly inductive susceptance or b is the reciprocal of inductive reactance similarly capacitive susceptance will be the reciprocal of uh, capacitive reactance similarly impedance is uh, given by R plus Jx. Basically, it is the combination of resistance and reactance. Similarly, admittance. Admittance is basically reciprocal of impedance. So, how do you represent admittance? Admittance is represented by Y and Y is equal to 1 divided by Z. And what it is? It will be the combination of this conductance plus your susceptance. Then active elements. The active elements of a power system comprises of motors, generators, synchronous condensers or loads such as furnace, adjustable speed drives. So why are these active elements? Because one or more of the parameters of the active element will vary as a function of time, phase angle, frequency, speed. So if these quantities change in the system, your output or your response of these equipment, your active elements will change. Now the four expressions for power quantities given in the table below can be used to model nonlinear quantities. So now for these kind of quantities, what do we want to know? We want to know what is the active power, what is the reactive power, what is the complex power or the apparent power and what is the power factor. So if we know these quantities, any two of these quantities, we can uh, calculate the remaining quantities. So just to go through it, complex power or apparent power is given by VA or KVA or MVA depending upon uh, the uh, type you have and how much big or small this power is. And it is defined by S is equal to P plus JQ, where P is the active part or the real part and Q is the imaginary part. Q, P part is related to the resistance and Q part is related to reactance in the system. Similarly, active power is given by P and its units in watt, kilowatt or megawatt and this is equal to by the simple Pythagoras theorem P is equal to under root of S square minus Q square. Similarly, reactive power is given by wars. It can be kilowars or megawars depending upon the unit you are using. And similarly, it can be defined by this expression. And at the end, power flow is given by PF. And what it is, it is basically the ratio between your active power and your apparent power. So now let's discuss transmission line modeling. So when you are trying to model a transmission line, four parameters are there which affect the performance of the transmission lines. These four parameters are the series resistance, series inductance, shunt capacitance and shunt conductance. So how does they come into play? Uh, let us take the example. If you ever see a transmission line or a uh, distribution feeder, what you see? You see three phases. And when you see three phases, so basically what is happening on a pole or on, on, on a tower, you will see three phases or the three conductors going on. So when we talk about a conductor or a, uh, so what will this conductor have? So this conductor is basically a wire or any conductor or the wire, what does it has? It has some kind of resistance in it. So this gives rise to series resistance. So all along the line some resistance is going to be there similarly when the current is going to flow through this inductor uh, this uh, conductor a magnetic field is going to be created around it so because of this magnetic field we are going to have some inductance in the transmission line so these are basically the series component which are um, distributed all along the line but on the other hand you may have two different things as well what are these things? The shunt capacitance. So how do we represent shunt capacitance or what is this capacitance? 
so you see you have uh, one conductor you have other conductor and air in between so what does this make uh, one plate second plate and and uh, insulation in between which is air in this case and this gives rise to your capacitance or a capacitor so basically a capacitive effect is going to be there in your system so due to this capacitive effect you are going to have this capacitance within your system it can be within the two transmission lines or from the transmission line to the ground so due to this we have this shunt component with uh, in the system which will be known as capacitance so these parameters affect both overhead lines and cables and the same calculation procedures are used to determine the parameter values in each case so because irrespective of if the conductor is on a uh, tower or it is in the form of a cable the calculation method is going to remain the same the only difference will come what will be the amount of values there so for instance if we talk about cable what will happen in cable so two cables or the two conductors of the cable or the two phases of the cable are in close proximity as compared to the overhead transmission line so what will happen so you have one conductor you have another conductor and instead of air now you have a better insulation which is replaced by rubber or some other good insulator uh, which is in insulating the cable so now the capacitance value in this uh, cable will increase and due to this uh, increase in capacitance you are going to have more shunt capacitance in cable as compared to transmission line so for this reason it is common to use the word line to represent both overhead lines and cable so when we talk about when we say commonly line it can be either transmission line or it can be a cable because both have the same kind of quantity please note that certain assumptions that are valid for widely spaced conductors used in overhead lines may not be valid for much closer conductor arrangement found in cables and one of the best example of this is the capacitance in them because for the overhead transmission line capacitance may not be that much high but in the case of a uh, cable this capacitance is going to play a very major role so now how do we mathematically model a transmission line from the physical structure so we usually model the transmission line in the form of a pi model so if you see a pi model what we are doing is on one side you have this uh, generation on the other side you have load and the transmission line is connecting your generation with the load and how we are modeling it if you see this is kind of a pi network so what does this pi represent this pi represent all the distributed r and x value in the conductor this is represented by here lumped r and x similarly all this value of uh, capacitance in the system which is the shunt capacitance it is represented on either side of the transmission line so c by 2 half c by 2 is here and half c by 2 is on this side but if you see this uh, difference between the cable and the transmission line for different two values this is just for your comparison if you see for 13.8 kv overhead transmission line and cable the resistance may remain the same inductive value yeah it is going to vary a little bit but the capacitance value is going to have a bigger change so if you see here so you will see that the capacitance value is for 13.8 and uh, the cable and the overhead transmission line you see that huge change in your capacitance value why because i told already told you the reason because in a transmission line your insulator is air but in cable you have a good insulator and the cables are in more close proximity as compared to the overhead transmission line so you see the change there this is a typical construction of a overhead transmission line so as i said uh, with the help of this uh, physical parameters if you know the physical parameters of your transmission line with the help of this you can calculate these passive uh, elements of the transmission line which are these r x and b so in e tab you have this uh, uh, available um, uh, capability available either you can give the values passive values directly that is r x and b values directly into the e tab software or what you can do is you give the physical parameters the physical parameters of your tower the physical parameters of your conductors your ground wire and once you give give all this value e tab automatically is going to calculate r x and b value out of this 
so it totally depends on you what do you want to do here